Canceling that billion-dollar order, I was speechless at Mike Brown's unexpected words. I think they were trying to scam us, but unlike that fool, Daniel, I'm not falling for it. Anyway, the order is canceled, so no need to deliver. Is it okay if they go bankrupt? I asked seriously. But Mike Brown laughed and mocked me. It'll be you guys going bankrupt. Good luck finding another sucker. Keep up this shady business, and you'll pay for it eventually. With that, he hung up the phone. The next day, while I was working, Mr. Robert, a call from Mr. Brown at Northridge Trading, Will said with a disgusted look, Tell him I'm out all day. However, after being told I wasn't in the office, Mike Brown started calling my cell like crazy. I realized I had given him my business card with my number on it. I couldn't just turn off my phone, so I decided to ignore it. I'm Robert Jones, a 53-year-old employee. My company specializes in cybersecurity. In short, we provide companies with network security and data protection technologies. Cybersecurity companies may not be publicly known, but they're implemented in every business, and ours is fairly well known in the industry. I joined this company at 35 and now work as both the head of development and an engineer. My previous job was fulfilling but had excessive overtime, which made me want to change jobs. My wife Sarah greatly encouraged this decision. Sarah, three years younger than me, is far more decisive and capable. Life will work out somehow, just go for it, was Sarah's catchphrase. Though it sounds like something a tough mom would say, it was her constant encouragement that pushed me to switch to my current company. Here I can leave work on time every day. This is partly because it's a well-organized, large company, but also because we have many talented employees. Robert, I'm free right now, so I'll take care of that, my direct subordinate, Will Johnson, offered. Will joined this company fresh out of college and is now 40, so his tenure here is about the same as mine. However, whenever I'm working on something, Will always offers to take over. Are you sure you're done with your own tasks? Yes, I finished the system due next week today, so I'm free. Robert, you have a lot on your plate, right? As Will said, I handle many projects every day. I'm not inefficient, but I tend to take on projects thinking I'll finish just in time, so Will's help is very welcome. By the way, the director of Northridge Trading is changing today, right? Yeah, that's right. We've had a long relationship with Northridge Trading, and they were already a client when I joined the company. The former director, Daniel Davis, was my age, and we got along well. However, he decided to retire early to take over his family's business. With Daniel, the transactions went smoothly, and knowing the internal workings helped a lot. But there's nothing to be done about it. I thought we'd still see Daniel, and it was just a change of directors. But the next day, Mike Brown, the new director of Northridge Trading, came to greet us. As soon as Director Brown entered our company, he frowned. This company feels stifling. It's gloomy, right? It's suffocating. Can you open a window? He instructed a nearby employee to open a window. However, our office is on the 13th floor, so opening windows is out of the question. We can't open windows in this office. The air purifiers are always running, and the ventilation system is on. I decided to ignore Director Brown's comment about it being gloomy. What? Who are you? He asked. I'm Robert Jones, Head of Development. I handled transactions with former Director Daniel. I handed him my business card, and Director Brown snorted. Oh, Daniel mentioned you? The guy who joined mid-career and became a director right away. I thought this company was nuts. Excuse me. Every word from Director Brown was sharp, and I couldn't ignore it. Isn't it obvious? Joining mid-career means you left your previous job due to some issue, making you a person of concern. Promoting someone like that to director immediately is stupid. Director Brown leaned back, looking down on me and the other employees. I couldn't hide my irritation. Why should my being a director cause such slander towards our company? 
Daniel was a fool to be deceived by you. From now on, I'll handle the transactions, and if you continue with this lax approach, I'll terminate the contract immediately. We've never done lax work. It was rare to have such a high-handed client, and I was stunned beyond anger. Anyway, do a proper job from now on. With that, Director Brown left after spewing his insults. After that incident, I felt uneasy about dealing with Northridge trading, especially with the system delivery deadline approaching in a week. As usual, it looked like we'd finished just in time, and I was in the final push. This system looks tough, Will said to me while I was taking a short break. Yeah, Daniel asked for it, and it took quite a bit of time. As we were talking, I received a call from Director Brown. It was the first time speaking with him since his initial visit, so I felt a bit tense. Hello, this is Robert. Seems like there's a system to be delivered in a week. Director Brown started talking without even a greeting, confirming my discomfort with him. Yes, that's correct. Cancelling that billion-dollar order? What? I was speechless at Director Brown's unexpected words. Cancelling? The system was already completed, and the costs for development and labor were substantial. I wanted to believe it was a joke, but he continued, We don't need such an expensive system. Apparently, Daniel had been dealing with you, but I found another company that can create a similar system for a tenth of the price, so we'll go with them. Director Brown spoke proudly. I was working on an updated version of the existing system. It was a new request since the current contract was about to expire and they needed a more secure system. I think you were trying to scam us, but unlike that fool, Daniel, I won't be fooled. Anyway, the order is cancelled, so no need to deliver. Did you discuss this with other employees? Did you consult anyone? Director Brown's arrogant attitude made me question if I was even talking to an adult. It's my decision. I'm the director, so I have all the authority. There's no need to consult anyone. These decisions are best made by capable people taking bold actions. His absurd reasoning was unsettling, and I was too shaken to respond. Do you understand what a billion-dollar contract means? Yeah, I get why you're panicking. Losing a billion-dollar contract suddenly must be tough. Daniel was a fool, and the other employees are just as foolish. They wasted our budget with these expensive contracts. Director Brown seemed serious, and I was at a loss for words. If other companies see us cancelling, they might realize how risky your company is and cancel their contracts, too. Don't blame us. It's your fault for charging outrageous prices. Are you prepared for bankruptcy? What? I asked sincerely, but Director Brown laughed and mocked me. It'll be you guys going bankrupt. Good luck finding another sucker. Keep up these shady practices, and you'll face the consequences someday. With that, he abruptly hung up. I couldn't believe what I had just heard and stood there in shock. When I informed the employees that the contract had been cancelled, they stood in stunned silence, just like me. I began to hear murmurs. The director is seriously bad news. I couldn't agree more but chose to stay silent. The next day, while I was working, Will approached me with a grim expression. Mr. Robert, Director Brown from Northridge Trading is on the line. Tell him I'm out all day. Honestly, what Director Brown said yesterday hit me hard. He spoke terribly about Daniel, whom I was close to, and accused us of being a scam company. I really didn't want to talk to him anymore. However, after being told I wasn't in the office, Director Brown started calling my cell phone incessantly. I remembered that I had given him my business card with my number on it. Feeling disheartened, I couldn't just turn off my phone, so I decided to ignore the calls. The number of missed calls reached an unsettling amount, almost like a horror movie. Suddenly, Director Brown burst into the office shouting, Robert. His sudden appearance startled me so much that I nearly had a heart attack. The employees were also frozen in shock. You're here. Why aren't you answering the phone? Director Brown was furious, his face bright red. 
A quick glance at my missed calls showed asterisk asterisk 103 asterisk asterisk, which sent chills down my spine. Do you know who I am? Don't you dare mock me, he shouted, kicking a nearby trash can, which ended up crumpled. He then grabbed a large potted plant, ripped it out, and smashed the pot to pieces. The chaotic scene unfolding before me filled me with fear, but I tried to calm him down. Sorry for not answering. I didn't have my phone on me. I lied desperately. You said you weren't in the office today. Director Brown walked straight toward me. I heard the employees gasp, and for the first time, I felt a cold chill down my spine. He grabbed my collar and punched me in the face, sending me sprawling to the floor as the employees screamed. I'm being told I'm fired because of you. Do something about it now. Will immediately rushed to my side, asking, Are you okay? Nodding, I stepped forward to shield Will. Acting like this without explaining anything isn't how an adult should behave, I said, trying to stay calm. Shut up. It's your fault. Director Brown snapped. When I said I canceled the contract with you, they told me I was fired. If it was such an important contract, you should have stopped me harder yesterday. Director Brown's reasoning was utterly unreasonable. I sighed, wincing at the pain in my cheek. I did ask you yesterday if you were prepared for bankruptcy, remember? Of course, I thought you were joking. If it was such an important system, you should have said so. I can't believe a company like yours could make something that important. Director Brown stomped his feet and yelled, Robert, are you okay? Suddenly, Daniel, the former director, appeared. Seeing the chaotic office and my injured face, Daniel turned pale. Daniel, why are you here? Mike called me too. When I listened to the voicemail, he was furious about the contract with you, so I came to check on things. Daniel turned to Director Brown, shouting, What on earth are you doing? Director Brown was older than Daniel, but Daniel had become a director early due to his exceptional skills, so in terms of position, Daniel was likely superior. I heard you unilaterally cancelled the contract with Robert. Why did you do that? Without the system Robert is developing, our company will go bankrupt. Despite having ridiculed Daniel so much, Director Brown shrank back when confronted directly. But another company said they could make the same system. No ordinary company can create a system with the same level of security as Robert's. He was originally a white hat hacker. A white hat hacker. Yes, a white hat hacker is an expert who conducts authorized intrusion tests to protect computer systems and networks. I used to work as a white hat hacker for a private company, but my skills were recognized and I began working with the police. It was rewarding to use my abilities to protect the country, but it was incredibly demanding. I often had to work late nights or stay away from home for days on end. At that time, our twins were just born, and Sarah was struggling with childcare. Not being able to see my cute children or participate in their upbringing took a toll on me mentally. However, I was aware that my job was special. During that period, I was ranked as the top white hat hacker and was entrusted with work involving critical national projects. I had confidence in my ability to meet those expectations. The thought of crime increasing if I quit made it hard for me to muster the courage to change jobs, but Sarah pushed me forward. In reality, there were plenty of talented white hat hackers, even after I left. Robert, you're overthinking it. Things always work out in the end. Sarah's optimistic outlook always lightened my heart. The security system Robert develops, having worked for the country, is not something an ordinary company can imitate. Our company handles a vast amount of customer card information and bank accounts. Remember the hacking incident where information was leaked? That's why our security needs to be extremely tight. The system's Daniel requests always require unparalleled security. It may sound arrogant, but no one else in this company can create them, and it's not something another company can replicate overnight. That's why it was surprising to hear another company claim they could. 
You realize showing our system to another company is a severe breach of contract, right? Director Brown looked at me with a dumbfounded expression, clearly not understanding. You've got to be kidding me. This is beyond embarrassing. As a former boss, Daniel held his head in disbelief. The system Robert is developing for us is classified. It's tailored specifically for our company, and only employees above a certain rank can access its details. Everyone in our company knows this. Daniel was genuinely exasperated, looking up at the sky. If that system leaks outside the company, penalties will be incurred. That's how important that system is to us. I didn't know about any penalties. Director Brown stammered, and Daniel blared at him. How could you not know? It was written in big red letters in the system manual. Daniel shouted. I didn't see that. Director Brown was almost in tears. I really didn't know, so it's not my fault for showing it to another company or canceling the order. If you make the system again, I think my firing will be reversed. Please deliver the system on the due date. This isn't something that can just be brushed off. Ideally, we should be handling this through lawyers, not directly. Hearing the word, lawyers, Director Brown glared at me. How long are you going to keep saying that? The system stops in a few days. Without a replacement, our company will go under. You wouldn't want that, so just deliver the system. I couldn't understand why he was getting angry again. At this point, the system that was supposed to be delivered to your company has already been repurposed into another system. What? Director Brown looked confused. I had another project that was similar to your request, so I reworked it and delivered it to them. The basics were the same, so it worked out well. I just delivered it a while ago. What? Director Brown still seemed confused. So if you want the system delivered, we'll have to start from scratch, which will take several months. Even if it took only a day, we have no intention of doing business with your company again. Finally understanding, Director Brown turned pale at my words. No business. You can't be serious. Without your system, I'll be fired. That's not my concern. You've trashed our office and injured me. We will be claiming damages, compensation, and medical expenses. Director Brown was speechless, his eyes wide with shock. What part of this was surprising? After causing so much havoc, a simple apology wouldn't suffice. Beg the president if you must and explain that you can't use our system. Find another company to build your system, though I doubt any company can deliver a security system in just a few days. Director Brown stared blankly into space, his pupils dilated, looking quite frightening. Sensing danger, I slowly backed away from him. I didn't want to get hurt again. It's your fault. It's your fault. As expected, Director Brown lunged at me, but Daniel restrained him from behind, and Will stood in front of me. At that moment, the sound of police sirens could be heard. Finally, they're here. The employees, including myself, sighed in relief while Director Brown looked confused and said, What? It's not surprising. After everything that's happened, calling the police is the obvious thing to do. I felt the tension release from my body and collapsed into a sitting position. I had never experienced such fear before. Hearing the approaching sirens, Director Brown finally gave up and calmed down. After that, the arriving police officers arrested Director Brown on the spot and took him away. I also had to go to the police station for questioning, and it took quite a long time. By the time I got home, it was past 8 o'clock p.m., and I was completely exhausted, both mentally and physically. Director Brown is now being held on assault charges and will face a civil lawsuit. The damages, including the penalty for leaking our system, my medical expenses, compensation, and the damages to his company amounted to an eye-watering sum. Director Brown was promptly abandoned by his wife and, of course, fired from the company. As for his company, they rushed to order a replacement security system, but during the period before its delivery, customer information was leaked. It was an inevitable result since they had no security system in place.
Since it was a fairly large company, the incident was covered on local news. They mentioned compensating the customers whose information was leaked, and I wondered vaguely if this would increase the damages owed by Director Brown. As for me, I was busy working on a system again. Today, there seems to be something called the Robert Brand among companies. What's that? I tilted my head at Will's words. If a company says they have a system made by Director Robert, it's considered to have strong security and business negotiations go smoothly. Oh, so that's why it's called the Robert Brand. I laughed, feeling satisfied. It's an honor to think that my name alone can help with business negotiations. Director Robert, you're truly amazing. No wonder your name is a power word. Our company received a record number of new graduate applications this year. Many engineers want to work under you. I once worked for the country, trying to prevent crimes as a white hat hacker. I thought I would never find a job more fulfilling than that. However, fulfillment isn't just about the scale of the work. Now I'm gradually reducing my own projects and focusing on training my subordinates. Training the next generation of engineers will ultimately enrich the future. There might even be an exceptional white hat hacker among the engineers I train. Thinking about that makes me realize I need to keep pushing myself.